Hi, this is Pat Montgomery, and you're listening to another episode of Parents Rule video blog. Today we're talking to Cassie McLean, uh, and her website is www.cassiecasi-mclean.com. And her book is Wingless Butterfly, Confessions of a Jerk Magnet. And uh, I know I've been a jerk magnet myself at times. <laughs> but um, as far as parents rule, I'm the author of Now You Know What I Know, Parenting Wisdom of a Grandmother, and The Patriot Parent, Still the Best Hope for America. Today with Cassie, we're going to talk about some very important issues, such as self-confidence and forgiveness. So Cassie, in your book, you talk about a story about a hundred-year-old man. Yes. Because I think we can teach our kids through stories and parables. So, you know, I think that's a great way to inspire people, and it really worked for me. I was watching television one day, and there was an interview that came on talking to a man who was 110 years old, and it was his birthday. So they were asking him to what he attributed his longevity. And he said, every morning when I wake up, I have a choice to be happy or sad, and I choose to be happy. I mean, talk about an aha moment. It's like I'm going, could it really be that simple? Exactly. <laughs> but I started, I started doing that. I started just kind of waking up in the morning thinking, this is going to be a happy day. And I, I tried to get that across to my kids, too, when they were depressed or sad or something didn't go right. I, you know, I tried to, to let them know that you have a choice. to. It's how you react to things. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control our feelings about them. And how we react and our reactions, them, right? And our reactions. And so I, I used to, uh, to, to try to, to help them with that. But I'll tell you when it really was hit. I'll tell you when it really hit home. And right after I got my divorce, I started dating a man. And he always reminded me of Eeyore, the sad sack little donkey on Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> And I used to tell him, I said, you know, you just remind me of Eeyore. In fact, I gave him an Eeyore for Christmas because he reminded <laughs> me so much of Eeyore. And I don't know how, how well he knew the, the character Eeyore. But I just started thinking, you know, you have a choice to be an Eeyore or a Tigger each day. And I always try to be a Tigger. In fact, I have Eeyore and Tigger sitting by my computer every day. And since then, I've talked to my kids about that, too. And it's interesting because a few years later, when Randy Posh did his last lecture, I was listening to his last lecture, and that man is so inspirational. He's one of my all-time favorite inspirational people. And he talked about Tigger and Eeyore and how you have a choice to be a Tigger or an Eeyore every day. I'm going, oh my gosh, it's the same thing as I came across. And it's, you know, I just, I've just loved everything that he had to say. I try to, at least at one point in the year, write a blog about Randy Posh because he was just such an inspiration, his whole story and how he lived to his last breath trying to inspire people to live their life and live it wholly. So yeah, it's, you know, the 100-year-old man and the Tigger and Eeyore, and I, I try to relate that to my kids. Right, and when you are a parent and you're reading a story to children and you have characters like Eeyore and Tigger, stop your story and say, Look at what's wrong with Eeyore. Why is he so sad? What do you think could happen? And what about Tigger? Why is he happy? Is that a choice we make? Can you choose to be more like Tigger or more like Eeyore? And, and use it as a teaching moment. I think parents, and I know I did, lose a lot of teaching moments with their kids. They just let them pass by. And don't make that mistake. Use those moments. You know, Pat, I'm smiling because she's, she's pointing this way. And the reason she's pointing is because right here next to me, I have my two little, my two little figures, <laughs> my Eeyore and my Tigger. Um, and these are the, the little animals that sit next to my computer. So they remind me every day. So if happiness is a choice, what about everything you hear about, uh, you know, I, I need a husband to make my life complete, to make my life happy. He needs to fill that void inside of me. What do you say about that? Well, oh boy, I've got a book. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a whole book about that. You know, I, you cannot fill up a hole or an emptiness inside of you with somebody else. 
and I, it took me a long time to learn that. I was always somebody something. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, you know, the daughter or the, the girlfriend or the mother or whatever. I was always somebody something. And when I got divorced, I thought, what now? You know, what am I going to do now? Can I survive on my own? And I had to come to terms with the happiness, the success. Everything comes from within me. And I had to heal myself. And I went through a lot of different relationships learning each of those things. But love was never meant to be something to fill an emptiness inside of you. You have to, to heal that yourself before you can be the person that the person you're looking for is looking for. Right, because otherwise you attract, attract jerk magnets. <laughs> it's true, that's true, because damaged people attract damaged people. Right. And that is what I did. So it was patterns that I put in place that that caused me to be a magnet for jerks. Okay. And, and, and honestly, I don't want to say they were all jerks. They weren't. In fact, I'm not sure any of them were jerks. They were just damaged people themselves. Right. I love The Secret, Rhonda Burns. Oh, absolutely. The Secret and the Law of Attraction. Law of attraction. Yeah. Absolutely, because it is so profoundly true. You exude something, and that's what you attract back to you. Mm -hmm. So when I was broken and needy, that's the kind of people that I attracted to. And they didn't know they were broken and needy. I didn't know I was broken and needy. But it wasn't until I healed myself inside that I realized that there is so much to these inspirational quotes and these inspirational things that people are talking about. That's absolutely true. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about in this area is you have a quote in the book. It says, as long as I accepted mediocrity, that was precisely what I was going to get. Exactly. And that fits right into what we were talking about here. Yeah, because I just lived my life thinking that I had no choices about it. And, I, and whatever came my way is what I had to accept. But it wasn't until I started believing in myself and realizing that I am who I believe I am. And that I can do anything I want to do as long as I set my mind towards that. I'm living my dreams right now. I am an author. And I even got to act in my own trailer. So in a way, I have reached both of those goals that I wanted to do as a teenager. And you know what? Not only is happiness a choice, it just feels better. It does. It does. When you put your life in your own hands, as scary as that is, and it's it, just better. And it was scary. It, it's very scary. But it is just better. Once you captain your own ship, you also have a quote in the book called Life is Now. It's the journey that is your life. And so you have to, to live every day to the fullest, which is, you know, Randy Posh, that's what he said. <laughs> It, it, it's just amazing. I mean, here was a man who was dying of pancreatic cancer. And he said that, I, I remember so well an interview he had with Diane Sawyer, when he said, you know, I know I'm dying. And I can either choose to coil up within myself, I wish I could remember the exact quote, but it was along these lines. I could either coil up in, within myself and cry about that. But I realized that I, my family's gonna fall off a cliff in a few months. And so I can either cry about what's happening to me or I can start sewing nets to catch them when they fall. Oh wow. And I just, it gave me chills. And I keep wow. thinking about that, that you know, nobody knows how long they have on this earth. No. And so you just need to, to live your life each day to the fullest. It's all about choice. It, you it have is. choices. Your choice, your choice determines your destiny. Right. Because you have choices every day. I mean, think about it. You you wake up in the morning and you choose what you eat, okay? I mean, I would love to have this big breakfast with eggs and bacon and grits and potatoes and all of But you know what? When I choose to do that, it's, it's going to affect my health. Mm -hmm. Every choice that you make in every direction of your life matters. And it's, it's okay to, to splurge one. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm, what I'm saying is that it's going to cause patterns. And those patterns are going to direct your life. You have choices in everything you do. And you have choices with whom you spend your time. That, to me, is extremely important. I spent a lot of my time around negative people. Yep. And it sucked me down. Mm -hmm. You can either make a point or you can make a difference. That's, uh, there are a couple of things I've said today that I got from my pastor, Andy mm -hmm. Stanley. That's one of them. Making a point and making a difference. If you make a point, you can be right to the grave. 
but you don't make a difference in that child's life. And you can really make a difference if you let him live his own dreams and, let, and, and, and lift him up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention that I said that is to be the person, the person I'm looking for is looking for, that also came from Andy Stanley. And sometimes he says things that just blow me away and they stick in wait, my wait, mind. Wait, wait, say that again. You want to be the person? I, ha I have become the person that the person I'm looking for is looking for. Therefore, I am now attracting the kind of men and friends, be they female or male, that I want to be around. So you're not accepting mediocrity anymore. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not accepting mediocrity and I'm not I'm not attracting broken people anymore. Law of attraction. Yep. But I have become the person who the person I'm looking for is looking for. And I just when he said that, when Andy Stanley said that, I went, Oh my gosh, that is just so profound. And it's the kind of thing that I put in my book, um, but it was said so well. I just Yeah, that's just that's a very part of profound me. and and really you have to think about that for yes. a minute. Because Actually, you are always the kind of person that the person you think you're looking for is looking for. Whether, you know, if you are broken and you're looking for a broken person subconsciously because you, that's all you think you deserve, very true. then that's who you are. It's very true. You know, and if you are whole and happy and filled with goodness, that's the person that you're going to attract. But you'll find the right person. You will find happiness in your life. But as Cassie said earlier, you've got to fix that yourself. You've got to fix your brokenness by yourself. When you start doing the things that you want to do, don't focus on trying to find a new relationship. I think new divorced, newly divorced people do that. It's almost like, I don't know who like I am not unless worth I'm with. Anything if they don't have somebody to go with the parties with. And the but, but beyond that, it's like, I don't even know what to do with myself mm -hmm. if I don't have somebody there to bounce things off of, to, to uh, you know, whatever, whatever the excuse is. But I just, I just think that, that when you start doing the things you love, finding out what it is you love, mm -hmm. what makes you happy instead of bending your life around the person you're with, what, what you, where you like to go, what you like to do, that's where you're going to meet the people instead of focusing on, oh, I've got to find somebody. And I think that also when you start living a life of forgiveness, a living a life of uh, things that make you happy, you're going to inspire and touch the people around you as well. Kids listen. Kids and listen, they listen to and the, watch. They listen to the bad things too, though. Yes. So that's you so important. You've got to be a good image for your children. Mm -hmm. You've got to give them something that they can strive to be. I remember when I was working on this book for, I guess, four or five years, I was pulling things together, and it, it wasn't even a book at first. It was just notes and trying to figure myself out. And I'd ask my son, you know, I really want you to live your dreams. And he goes, yeah, Mom, you've been trying to write a book for how long now, and how's that working out for you? <laughs> when I got a publisher, it turned his life around because he realized that I put all of this work into it, but it was finally paying off. And that was, you know, one of the greatest moments in my life when I realized that what I was doing was helping him strive for his dreams. And now he's, he's doing it. He's, both of them are doing it, and I, I'm just thrilled. And Cassie is a um, designer. She's a resident designer. I, wa I was a residential designer. I was forced <laughs> into early retirement because I worked with custom builders in this economy. But, but you know what? And it she, gave me a that's chance. That's right. To, and she to, to is a this. teacher and an author and a motivational speaker. And now you know why she's a motivational speaker. And I'm just so honored that you let me interview you. Well, I have had a lot of fun, and I, well, we I live close together. We do, we do. So that's very cool. And her website is again CassieMcLean.com. That's C A S I dash M C L E A N dot com. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is Wingless Butterfly. You can see a trailer for the book if you go to YouTube and just type in Wingless Butterfly. This has been Parents Rule, and I hope you enjoyed the show today. We'll talk soon.